I'm gonna keep this one short. Final Fantasy 13 and 13 2 are underrated if you're the type of player who's interested in the approaches they take. There's 13's focus on world building and non-linear storytelling, and 13-2's refinement of the already fun combat plus an open quest system and wacky time travel plot. If you're an open-minded fan who's into lots of different types of games, you might find a ton to love in these now classics. Fans who want traditional Final Fantasy gameplay and structure should look elsewhere though, and I get why the first game at least gets the criticism it does. Sales numbers show that far fewer people even bothered to check out 13.2, but I suspect that if they did, even many FF13 haters would have a blast with it. Now, I've already done full videos on both of these games, they're linked below and at the end of the video if you want to check them out, so I'll quickly go through a few reasons why I quite like them, then I'll rank them on the old tier list. Final Fantasy XIII at first seems a lot like Final Fantasy X, which is one of my least favorites so far, and one I criticize for having many elements that XIII shares. The extreme linearity and lack of side content bothered me in X, but here it's not so bad. Why is that? Well, 13's focus on what to me was an interesting story, coupled with its flashy new and surprisingly deep combat, hooked me more than FF10's reliance on slow traditional turn-based battles. Don't get me wrong, I like those, but not in a linear game with nothing to explore or do. 13 feels like playing an action movie, since Latin and her compatriots dance from plot point to plot point at a mad pace, yet it never neglects character development, even when it's cheesy. I like the occasional JRPG with loads of that over-the-top Japanese cheese, though, so it works. I enjoyed 13's story more than 10's overall. Finding out about how the Lassie work had me hooked, and the visuals are still, still in 2023, among the best I've seen in gaming. I don't know what kind of nonsense Black Magic Square had to pull to crank out something looking this good on the PS3, no less. Playing today, it's as impressive as ever, though 13.2 takes a big hit to visual quality in both gameplay and cutscenes. It makes up for that in having crazy awesome music, sort of a jazz rock electronic fusion that keeps the surprises coming. If you haven't heard it, check out 13.2's Chocobo theme and thank me later. In addition, the game lets you explore a collection of large open areas at multiple time periods with all sorts of optional quests to take on from near the get-go. The main story retcons the ending of the first in a disappointing way, but it does go on to build an intriguing and dark adventure for Lightning's sister Sarah and series newcomer Noel. Now, I played these games a while ago, so I won't pretend to remember the details of the story, but I do wish it felt more interconnected with the first game. It's essentially a standalone story that happens to share some characters. Even though Lightning is present in, a uh, spirit throughout, she could easily be a different character since her side plot has nothing to do with base Final Fantasy XIII. From what I've read, I think the creators are going for an anthology series of sorts about their Fabula Nova Crystallis concept, where each entry explores a part of the grand abstract mythology the games share, but I fear this was too ambitious for the trilogy's own good. I love both of these titles, but they don't quite reach that upper echelon of greatness for me. Which brings us to tier list time. I aim to rank games as fairly as possible based on how much I enjoyed them, and I've got to rank Final Fantasy XIII in the A tier. It can't top FF2, it's tough to do that, but I'd sooner replay it over 3, so there it goes for now. 13-2, well, while playing it, I thought it'd go higher, but thinking back, it doesn't hit the highs of any game ranked above it, and 13 deserves to be a smidge above too, overall. Visually, that one's an absolute feast, which matters a lot due to its cinematic pace and presentation. On the other hand, I spent way more time exploring and damn near 100% in 13-2. I love open-ended game structure like that, so it's basically a toss-up. If you're wondering why I didn't cover Lightning Returns in this video, that's because I haven't played it at the time of writing this. But it won't be my next newcomer's perspective. That'll be none other than Final Fantasy IV. 
look forward to that, and in the meantime, check out my full videos on FF13 and 13.2, and thanks for watching. Leave a like for that algorithm, subscribe for weekly videos on RPGs of all kinds, and have a blessed day, yuppies.